Hello, my name is Alexi. I'm finance officer here at the Joint Secretariat in Lille. If you landed on this video, it's probably because you have questions about staff cost. But don't worry, there is only one method that we are using currently, the fixed percentage. And you can use it whether you're working full-time or part-time on the project. The video will be divided in three parts. The first part will be the basics of the staff cost. Then the second part will be how to define a plausible percentage for your different employees and see how the fixed percentage works in general. The third and last part will be about reporting staff cost into the portal. Hello, I am Anne Rocheteau and I'm finance officer. Hello everyone, I'm Ségolène Jean and I'm also a finance officer. Let's start with the basics of staff cost and define what it covers. So, what do you mean by staff cost? So, as the name stands for it, staff costs are only for staff members, meaning the staff employed by your partner organization and working directly on your project. All right, so if I have an association or a network, only the staff directly employed by my organization can be reported as staff costs. This means the staff of my members, which are not directly employed by me as a partner, cannot be reported as staff cost. Also, if I work with an in-house company, who is a separate legal entity, their cost for the staff working on the project cannot be reported as staff cost. Indeed, they are not directly employed by the partner organization. Their costs can be reported as external expertise and services as long as there is a cash flow between the partner organization and the in-house company. This means that there is actually a reimbursement, a payment from the partner to the in-house company. So how do we prove they are my staff? Well, you can prove they are your staff members with an employment contract or any other legal document proving the employment relationship between the employee and the partner organization. So the employment contract can be signed before the beginning of the project. It does not need to be made only for the project. What costs can be claimed? You can claim the gross employment cost. This includes the employment taxes, the social security contribution, as long as the employer cannot recover the costs. Bonuses may also be claimed as long as the employer is involved in the project and they are part of the usual practices in the organization. In case of doubt, you can always check with your controller if costs can be determined eligible. So what are the supporting documents needed? Well, you will be uploading all the supporting documents directly in the portal. For staff costs, in most cases, you will provide the signed employment contract, the pay slips uh, with the details of the gross employment cost, the proof of payment and the task assignment letter. For the employment contract and the task assignment letter, you will provide them once at the beginning of the project and then upload them again only in case of change. Hello, I'm Camille and I'm Vincenzo. We are finance officers and we are here to tell you more about the fixed percentage. Let's now see how the fixed percentage to report staff cost to Interreg Europe works and how to define a plausible percentage for your employees. What is a task assignment letter? The task assignment letter sets out the fixed percentage an employee works on the project. It contains several information. The percentage of time the employee will dedicate to the project per month, a description of the role of the employee in the project, for instance, if this person will be in charge of project coordination, financial management, or communication management, as well as a description of the tasks and responsibilities assigned to this employee. When should the task assignment letter be signed? The task assignment letter is usually issued at the beginning of the period it applies to, and it is dated and signed by both the employee and the line manager or supervisor. You may find the task assignment letter model on our website. That's a template that contains all the minimum requirements needed by the program. But in case of doubt, do not hesitate to ask your controller. If several persons from your organization work on the project, then a fixed percentage should be defined for each one of them in a separated task assignment letter. How can I come up with a percentage for an employee? One of the first things you need to do is to define what will be the role of the employee in the project. A good way to start is to identify the tasks and duties this employee will be in charge of. You should also consider whether this person will be involved in any other project or if he or she has tasks not related to the Interreg Europe project. By doing so, you should be able to estimate how much of their working time they will spend performing this task. How often can the percentage change? In your organization, you surely have an annual staff appraisal, a performance of review, 
or any other opportunity to discuss your task and responsibilities within your organization. If following such a meeting, your task and responsibilities within the project change, then the task assignment letter may be updated accordingly. And if following such a change within your task and responsibilities also implies a change in the time you will spend on the project, then the fixed percentage may also be adjusted. But let's make an example and let's assume that an employee within the organization is in charge of both the project coordination and communication task. But after the annual staff appraisal, this person will now be in charge only of the project coordination task, leaving the communication to someone else. In this case, the task assignment letter can be revised in order to reflect the change in the fixed percentage of this person. And in fact, a new task assignment letter should be issued. Remember though, the fixed percentage should not be updated every semester. But what happens if the fixed percentage does not reflect 100% the reality of the cost spent in one period? The fixed percentage should be as close as possible to the actual involvement of the employee in the project. However, by definition, a percentage cannot always reflect 100% accurately the time spent on the project by an employee in every period. There might be period when the employee spends more time on the project and some others when the employee spends less time on the project. This is perfectly understandable. You need to think of the fixed percentage as an average of the time spent by an employee on the project per month over the whole project duration. Should I fill in any timesheet? That's one of the perks of the fixed percentage. You do not need to fill in or submit any timesheet. As we said earlier, the fixed percentage needs only to be documented in employment contract, in the task assignment letter, or in any other official document issued by your employer. So timesheets, no longer necessary. Now you know how to come up with a plausible fixed percentage, let's try to make it a bit more concrete. Of course, let's take the example of an organization that is involved in two Interreg Europe projects. One of his employees, let's call him Dwight, is mostly involved in the project Bit Farming Innovation, where his organization is lead partner. He's the project coordinator and he attends all the project meetings, mostly on site. He also supervises the work of his colleagues in producing project deliverables and is in charge of preparing the activities and results part of the progress report. Moreover, he also supports his colleagues on the other project. Despite sharing his time in two projects, the level of involvement of Dwight in bit farming innovation is way higher. This is why, considering all of his tasks, we can imagine for Dwight a percentage of approximately 75%. The organization got a second Interreg Europe project approved called Warehouse, for which an employee that we can call Jim is involved as the financial manager. Jim does not only work on Warehouse project, he also works on other projects from other programs and initiatives. In Warehouse project, Jim gathers all supporting documents for the verification of expenditure, he leads all public procurement procedures, and he fills the financial side of the report. He is also the person in touch with the controller if needed. Considering this involvement in the project, we could imagine a fixed percentage of 20% for Jim. Finally, the director. We can call him Mike. He's not really involved in the implementation of project activities. He only takes part in meetings and in project events whenever they are relevant for him. And he gets also weekly information about all of the projects his organization is involved in. Considering this kind of involvement, we could imagine that the fixed percentage for Michael is around like zero and 5%. So in fact, considering such a low involvement, it is up to you to decide whether it is really worth it to draft a task assignment letter for Michael and so to report his staff cost. My name is Ruta Ruocha and I'm a finance officer in Interreg Europe and I will tell you how to report staff costs in the portal. It's very easy. You have to report one month per one line per employee. You can now see on the screen how it will look on the portal. It is important to put each month in a new line since the portal will generate a 10 item sample for your controller to check. And that's a wrap for today. We really hope that this series of short videos was useful. You should by now know that there is only one staff cost calculation method in Interreg Europe, the fixed percentage. You should know how to use it and you should know how to define a plausible percentage for each of your employees. It should be easier for you now to also report this cost directly into the portal. Of course, if you still have questions, don't hesitate to contact your officers at the Secretariat. They are here to help you.